Hey, what's up you guys? This is Abigail Price and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some of the books that I have that I think will make terrific movies. Some of these books I have you may have heard of before, but others you may not have. But I highly recommend the ones I'm going to show y'all today. So let's get started. The first selection of books is the Penderwick series. Now this is a book series about four sisters who um, live with their father in a fictional town in Massachusetts. And it's kind of like a modern day version of Little Women, but except it's kind of a little more modern. <laughs> and they're books by Jeannie Birdsall and the sisters couldn't be any more different. And they're very relatable too. Like there's Rosalind who is the 12 year old who's the really motherly type. And there's also and Skye who is 11, who's kind of like the stubborn one out of the sisters and she's really tomboyish and not really girly at all like her sisters. And she wants to be an astrophysicist someday because she's really into math and all that stuff. And then there's also Jane who is 10 and she wants to be a writer someday and constantly writes about her character that she made that she made up called Sabrina Scott. And there's also Batty who is four who wears these adorable little butterfly wings that you could ever see in your lifetime. And she's really shy and and Rosalind is very motherly towards her. So yeah. There are four other books in total that make up this five book series. Like The Penderwicks on Gardam Street, The Penderwicks and Point New Yet, and finally, The Penderwicks in Spring and The Penderwicks at Last. Now, I think these series of books would make a terrific m movie series because. I just like movies that have to do with that whole sister bond and all I'm that. I'm one of three sisters, so I can understand what that sisterly bond feels like. And I just think that The Penderwicks could be a great movie series that the whole family could enjoy, whether you're adults or if you're kids. So yeah, that's why I think that The Penderwicks deserves to be a movie series in general. If you like stories about finding your true ancestry, then I highly recommend this next series, The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. Y'all have ever heard of that legendary constellation called The Seven Sisters or Pleiades in general, however you pronounce that name? Um, this is kind of like a fictionalized tale about it where all of these sisters get adopted by this mysterious guy named Paul Salt and they grow up in this childhood home called Lake Geneva like some place off of the coast of Switzerland or something. The first book in the Seven Sisters series talks about the oldest one Maya and how the clues of her famous ancestry lead her to her heritage in Brazil where she learns about her great-great-grandmother Isabella Bonifacio and what's really neat about this book is that it kind of talks about the backstory behind the guy who created the famous Christ the Redeemer statue that you may have seen in Brazil whether you've been there or not and this was just a really neat kind of introduction to the series in general. In this next book The Storm Sister it talks about the second sister Allie or Alcyone, if you want the specific star name she went by. And the clue to her ancestry leads her to Norway, where she learns about her great-great-grandmother, singer Anna Landvik, and she's somehow linked to that famous Norwegian composer Edvard, Edvard Greig. I don't know how to pronounce these names, guys. But anyways, she ends up learning about, or actually she kind of ends up questioning who her father, Paul really was and why the seventh sister remains missing and kind of a mystery throughout okay, the now series. Now in this next book, The Shadow Sister, it talks about a therapy 
or Star, as she's known by in the series. And it talks about how her clues to her ancestry lead her to an antique bookshop in London, where she and her sister Cece currently are. And she learns about her great-grandmother Flora McNichol in this. And it actually talks a little bit about the legendary children's author Beatrix Potter in this. So yeah, I actually think that's kind of cool. Book in the series, The Pearl Sister, talks about the next sister, Cece, or Celiano, which is her star name. And it talks about how the clues of her ancestry lead her to Australia, where she learns about her ancestor, Kitty McBride, and then somehow in the book she gets led to learning a little bit about the Aborigines people. Who the most there. recent book she came out with was The Moon Sister, which talks about Tiggy and her adventures in Scotland and stuff. And I'm not really sure when she's going to come out with the story about Electra, but hopefully I'll read when that Last comes out. Last time I heard anything about it being turned into either a movie or a television series was back in 2016 where a woman named Rafaela De Laurentiis said that she was going to do a TV series about it. To be honest, I really don't know if she's still keen on doing that because there hasn't really been any other recent updates about that sort of thing since 2016, so... That's a real mystery the for you. next series I'm going to talk about is the Fantastic Family Whipple series. It's about this boy named Arthur who comes from a family of world record holders. And he's the only one in his family who hasn't held one. And he tries to... But then, trouble emerges when a pair of sinister clowns start stalking the family for whatever reason. And you can read the rest of this book to find book out in this how. series by Matthew Ward is War of the World Records in which the Whipple family ends up competing against another world record breaking family called the Goldwins to um, see who deserves the title of the world's most record breaking family. It's almost like the Bakers versus Murtaugh situation in Cheaper by the Dozen too. But yeah. That's the little thing about this oh, yeah. book. And speaking of Cheaper by the Dozen, I read that director Sean Levy was going to produce this movie with 20th Century Fox to make this movie back in 2014. But I don't know whether it is still in production or if production just closed on it for whatever reason. But I'd say it deserves a chance to make a good box office motion picture even if they make it into an animated series. Next, I will be talking to you guys about single books. And the first one will be The Ghost Road by Chris This Cotton. is about a girl named Ruth who spends some time with family that she's never met over the summer instead of staying with her father. And the shocking fact is she finds out that she and her cousin Ruby have much more in common than they realized especially with a shocking fact. Both lost their mothers when they were only two years old, and they end up discovering that they weren't the first twins in the family, in their ancestry, that this happened to. And they find out that their families actually had a lifelong curse. I think this would make an interesting movie or TV series because A, it's about twins, and B, it has a curse in it, and who doesn't love both twins and curses in a book at the same time. So, you never know. Hollywood, if you're knocking at Chris Cotter's door, better tell him this would make a great Next series. Book I'm going to be talking to y'all about is Remarkable by Lizzie K. Foley. This is about a girl who lives in a town called Remarkable, where everybody is either really talented, really gifted, or just plain extraordinary. And Jane Doe, well, let's face it, she's just not remarkable. Until she comes across the Gremlet twins and a very strange Captain Pirate. She just might be remarkable after remarkable all. Remarkable by Lizzie K. Foley. 
make a great movie or TV series? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure, but maybe it could, maybe it couldn't. It's up to you guys what you think. The next book I'll talk to you guys about is The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street by Karina Yan Glazer. It's about this family called the Vanderbeekers who live on 141st Street in Harlem. And this story takes place five days before Christmas where their landlord, okay, <clears throat> their landlord all of a sudden just won't renew their leases and the Vanderbeek kids try to find out why. There's another book in this series too called Book Two, but I don't really have that book yet, so that's just why I just decided to review this one. And could it make a good movie or TV series? It could. Maybe an animated series would work for this book. Oh yeah, and I also decided to review this book because it kind of reminded me of the Penderwicks in a way, except the only difference is, is that the Vanderbeek, the Vanderbeekers are a mixed race family while the Penderwicks are white, I guess. Okay, so apparently I just did a little research and I just found out that there's actually two other Vanderbeeker books too. Um, One is called the Vanderbeekers and the Hidden Garden, and the other the one. Third is one is the Vanderbeekers to the Rescue. Thank you. you. Guys, about is Esperanza Rising by Pam Munoz Ryan. Now this is about a Mexican girl named Esperanza who um, leaves her family's ranch in Mexico with her mother at the time that the Great Depression is happening, and she moves to California where she settles into a camp for Mexican farm workers. And then sometime during the book, her mother gets really sick and Esperanza must learn how to rise above her difficult circumstances. And I think this would be an excellent movie because I just think Esperanza's story is like a great immigration story, like especially for those that immigrated in the past and especially in times right now where especially in times right now where immigration for latin americans is kind of becoming a problem thanks to you know which president my friends right in now. elementary school read this and i didn't really start reading this or understood why it was such a great book until now and i just like the message behind this book and i think others who have read it will probably agree with me on this one too so yeah, I think this would be a excellent Last book. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about is Ghosts by Raina Telgemeier. This is a story about a girl named Katrina, or Kat as she's known in this book. Um, and anyways, she and her family move to this fictional town. She and her family move to this fictional town called Bahia de la Luna on account of her sister Maya having cystic fibrosis and her parents think that the salty air would kind of be more beneficial towards her breath and all that stuff and some strange things start happening where ghosts kind of start to appear like in a lot of places and what's kind of cool is that the Latino holiday Dia de los Muertos is in this book too, so it kind of gave Rain. I think it gave Raina some inspiration in this book, and I think it's a pretty good one, and I think it would, it would be, be a, a pretty, pretty good movie um, because a it talks about Dia de los Muertos, and d because there's not very many books that feature. Um, kids with cystic fibrosis, like little Maya right here on the cover. So, yeah. They could even make it into a mini cartoon series. You never know. But I highly recommend this book in case you're not looking for a graphic novel that's got anime in it. Have a great day or a great night, everybody.
Bye.